Hello, in the previous video, I took you up to this point where we discovered that the formula for, crea uh, for calculating the directional derivative is simply a dot product between the gradient vector evaluated at the point and the unit vector in which your um, direction that you're stepping in. So um, it also can be the case that instead of being given an actual direction vector, you could be given an angle. And so if someone gives you an angle and says, you know, step at this angle, what would be the slope of the, what would be the grade, what, how steep will the function be if you step at this angle? In that case, then you have to create the unit vector so that you can perform the calculation. And so we have, uh, if you have an angle, you can always create a unit vector with that angle because um, cosine theta could be your i component and sine theta could be your j component. And you'll automatically then, because of cosine squared plus sine squared, you'll have for sure a unit vector and so you could then just dot with that to uh, to calculate your directional derivative now the question is so why does the directional derivative limit equal to the directional derivative calculation formula with the gradient and so um, this slide here hopefully is to to answer that it's not animated or anything but I'll walk you through it um, what you do is a, a renaming of the function. You see, uh, h is a known value. Uh, h is going to go to zero. H is actually the value. Uh, x naught is known, and, and uh, a is known, and y naught is known, and b is known. And so what's going on here is that you have yourself a, a function of h. So you do a, a renaming where you have g of h is equal to the, the, uh, the first part there, the f of x naught plus h a, y naught plus h b. So that's your function of h. Um, when 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 uh, h is equal to zero, you'll have x not y not. And so what you're doing then in this renaming is you're creating a single variable function, which then turns your limit into a single variable limit. All right. So g prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to zero of g of x plus h minus g of x. Okay, that's the definition of a, a derivative, right? And so for you then, g prime of zero is the limit as h goes to zero of g of h minus g of zero all over h. Okay. Now, g prime of zero is going to end up being the, the directional derivative. We have to show that. Um, and so what we have then is g of h is the first half of the numerator, g of 0 is the second half of the numerator, they're subtracted and it's all divided by h. Okay, and so then we've recast the directional derivative as the symbol g prime of 0. All right, all right, great. Um, all right, let's revisit g of h. It's a function of uh, so we had a function of x and y, and x and y are separately functions of h. This is your classic chain rule situation that we talked about in previous lectures. So if your inside functions are functions of another variable, you can execute the chain rule and calculate the derivative. So um, g then, uh, g prime of h will be the partial of f with respect to x times the derivative of x with respect to h plus the partial of f with respect to y times the derivative of y with respect to h. Okay. All right, great. What is the derivative of x with respect to h? The formula is x is equal to x naught plus h a. And so the derivative of x with respect to h is just an a. The derivative of y with respect to h is just a b. And so g prime of h is the partial derivative of f with respect to x times a plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y times b. That's what g prime of h is. Okay. Um, when h is equal to zero, that's when you're at your, your point um, x not y not. All right. So if you put a zero into this, you have exactly the formula that you take the x partial, plug in x not y not. Multiply it by a. You take the y partial, plug in x not y not, multiply by b. So that would be what g prime of zero is, and that can be recast as a dot product. 
where you take the fx at x not y not and the fy at, at x not y not and you dot it with the ab and so g prime of zero on the one hand is a directional derivative g prime of zero on the other hand is this dot product and so that's the, the reasoning behind why we won't use the limit <laughs> the definition limit we will use this dot product it's okay if you didn't follow that uh, i don't think i did the best job doing it i tried though and so there we go let's just quickly do a, a calculation uh, here's a multivariable function x squared minus 3xy plus 4y cubed here's a vector 1 2 here's a point negative 2 0 so when x is negative 2 and y is 0 you're on the you're on the surface someplace and you want to then step in the direction of 1 2 and you want to calculate the slope of the surface the, the steepness of the surface in that particular direction from that particular point well it's a simple dot product dot product between the gradient at that point and the unit vector in that direction all right, great. Let's go get the gradient. What is the gradient? It's a vector that has as its i and j components the x and y partial of the function evaluated at our point. And so if our function is x squared minus 3xy plus 4y cubed, what's the x partial? It's going to be 2x minus 3y. What is the y partial? It's going to be minus 3x plus 12y squared. That's your gradient vector. But you need that gradient vector evaluated at your point when x is negative 2 and y is 0. So you'll have a negative 4 for the i component and then a 6 for the j component. That's your gradient. That's half of your dot product. You're halfway there. Now for the unit vector, uh, the vector that you have, unfortunately, is not a unit. The magnitude of that vector is rad 5. Right? 1 squared plus 2 squared. Add it up. Take square root magnitude of a is rad 5. Knowing the magnitude, you can turn it into a unit vector though. Remember, you multiply, you scale by the reciprocal of the uh, magnitude. So we multiply our vector 1, 2 by 1 over rad 5, given 1 over rad 5 and 2 over rad 5. That vector is a unit vector. And that's your other half of your dot product. That's it. So now we'll dot these two and we'll have the number that measures the steepness of the surface at that point in that direction. Negative 4 over rad 5 plus 12 over rad 5, 8 over rad 5. Leave it. You don't have to. I mean, would it look much better if you say 8 rad 5 over 5? Let's just leave it as it is. And that's it. Good job. All right. Now we, let's do a more difficult one. We have this function z minus x on top of z plus y. Let's go to three dimensions. Okay, so this represents a four-dimensional four function. Nothing we can visualize. We have a point. We have a direction. Function point direction. We can calculate the derivative, the, the directional derivative of our function at our point in that direction. All right, great. Um, it's just the dot product between the gradient and the unit vector. Okay, so now we have the function, and we have to take the x and the y, and now the z partial of this function. All right, so the function is z minus x on top of z plus y. If you're going to take the um, x partial, let's view this then as um, z minus x times z plus y to the negative 1. Why would we want to view it like this? Because then only the first part has x in it. That z plus y to the negative 1 has no x's in it. And so we take the derivative of the first part and we just carry along the second part. Negative 1 is the x partial of the first part. And it's times this z plus y over, uh, over you know, to the negative 1. Or just on z plus y underneath. Okay, now for the y partial, you ignore the z minus x piece. You just carry that along and you focus on the z plus y piece the, to the negative 1. The derivative of that is negative, two, or negative 1, that guy, to the negative 2. And so you have your z minus x, you have your negative 1, but then your z plus y will be to the negative 2. Here's it written in positive exponents. If you distribute, you can just flip-flop those and call it x minus z on top of that z plus y quantity squared. Doing great. All right, now the z partial. 
Uh, that's the one they're in both. Can't do anything with it. So um, go back to the original and do a quotient rule. Bottom squared, bring the bottom up to the top, take the root of the top with respect to z. It's a one. Put a minus sign, leave the top alone, take the root of the bottom with respect to z. It's a one. And then you'll see that the z's end up canceling out, and you'll have y minus uh, y plus, sorry, y plus x on top of the quantity of z plus y quantity squared. You did it. A little bit of work. Okay, not so easy as the polynomial, but you did it. And now we're going to plug in x is 1 and y is 0 and z is negative 3. The denominator each time, well, the first denominator is the sum of the z and the y, so that's a negative 3. But then you square it on the other guys. So the negative 1 on top of negative 3 makes the first component 1 third. And then the um, the, the next components have 9 as their denominators, and we're taking x minus z, so that's a 4. And then we're taking y plus x, so that's a 1. So 1 third, 4 ninths, 1 ninth, half of your dot product. Most of the work is already done. We just need the unit vector to dot this with. All right, uh, the vector's not unit. The magnitude of that vector, you take the 6 in square and 3 in square and 2 in square. When you do that all together, it works out nicely, though, because 36 and 9 and 4 is a perfect square. It's 49. So when you take the square root, you get 7. Very nice. So then you divide every component by 7. You have your unit vector. Just dot these two and you're all done. You have the, the calculation for the, magnet, the slope of the, the curve, slope of the surface at that point in that direction. Okay. You'll get uh, negative 6 over 21, 12 over 63, negative 2 over 63. That, that, that negative 6 over 21, you can make it over 63 as well by times the top and bottom by 3. So negative 18 plus a 12 minus a 2 all over 63 turns out to be negative 8 over 63. All right, good work. So in this video, we um, showed why the formula is what it is. We proved how the limit and the dot product are calculating the same thing. And we did two examples, one very rather easy example, one kind of a little bit more difficult, one two dimensional, one three dimensional. Sorry, this video went over my standard 10 minutes, but that's OK. Um, let's go ahead and stop it here, though. We'll come back with some more in the next video. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this journey. Please comment down below, uh, like and subscribe. Reach out to me if you need any help and I'll see you in the next video.